Hello people and welcome to BTEC. David here and I've got some more from my trip to IFA, the Consumer Electronics Show in Berlin. The show ended yesterday, 5th of September, but I personally think it could have run for another week at least. If you really wanted to see everything here, you'd need much longer than the six days it runs for. But if you never made it down here, then don't worry. As for the next few days, I'll be bringing you the best of what I saw down in Berlin, BTEC style. Check out my EFA videos on the Sony X-O3 and the X-A2 Plus. And subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my full reviews on the XZ3, XZ2 Premium and the Note 9 which are all coming up over the next few weeks. And you know we do things properly here at BTEC. We don't just grab the phone, throw it on a dirty table and start talking smack about it. Nah no, man, we do reviews properly around here. But before we get into this one, I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors Direct Mobiles. They have over 23 years of award winning customer service and have a great selection of phones at excellent prices. Check the description below for a link to their website or search directmobiles.co.uk. I was invited to the Huawei press briefing at a very nice hotel in Berlin. They had a few announcements. First, well, they made one of the best phones of the year even better by adding some new colors and some new textures to it. The P20 Pro is now available in black leather and a tan leather variant, the tan having a gold finish to the metal frame. This is good news if you can't stand those fingerprints and the phone is going to be much more likely to survive a drop so long as it lands on its back. But if you don't care about all that and you want that beautiful glass, then the amazing Morpho Aurora and Pearl White are definitely for you. Huawei say that they turn to nature for inspiration. The Morpho Aurora is based on the colors of the Morpho Butterfly, while the Pearl White has the same iridescence as Mother of Pearl. They also went into some detail about their newest and most powerful chipset, the Kirin 980. This is the chip that will feature in their next generation of flagship handsets, the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro which are due to be announced in mid-October. The Kirin 980 will use the newly developed ARM Cortex A76 CPU cores built on a 7 nanometer process and packing 6.9 billion transistors within a 1 centimeter squared die. This is 1.6 times the amount possible with a 10 nanometer process which is used in the previous generation. The Cortex A76 cores embedded into the Kirin 980 will be 75% more powerful and 40% more energy efficient than the Cortex A73 cores used in the Kirin 970 which powers the P20 Pro. The Kirin 980 will have more powerful AI abilities with faster dual AI processors and it's said that they have simplified the development ecosystem making it more accessible and easier for developers to utilize the AI capabilities. The new Mali G76 GPU will be paired with the Cortex and as the name suggests, they are intended to be used together. The Mali also promises much improved performance and power efficiency, 46% greater graphics processing while using a fraction of the power of the previous generation. So gaming from now on should always be fast and smooth and throttling should be less of a problem as less power consumed means less heat. If you delve into the specs, it gives you a taste for what phones in 2019 will be like. Fast, with long lasting batteries and hopefully without overheating. With the Mate series known for having huge batteries and this super efficient technology powering it, I think we can expect some serious on-screen time with the Mate 20 and with the Mate 20 Pro. Huawei also announced the Mate 20 Lite, the first from the Mate 20 series. It's equipped with four cameras and the Mate 20 Lite combines AI technology with high performance hardware. It won't have the new Kirin 980 powering it, but instead it will have the newly developed Kirin 710. They call it Lite, but you wouldn't think so from reading the specs. A 6.3 inch IPS LCD, a 20 megapixel rear camera, 6 gigabytes of RAM and a 3750 milliamp hour battery cell. If this is the light, then we can expect a lot from the Pro. Straight after the Huawei briefing, I went across town to the Honor Play launch at another swanky venue. Greeted by characters from the game PUBG, we took our seats and were presented with a very affordable gaming phone designed to intelligently manage its power through AI and GPU Turbo to give a high quality and smooth gaming experience even in graphic intensive titles. The Honor Play is aimed at young people and comes in three colors, midnight black, navy blue and ultraviolet. There's also a player's edition with a typical gamer's look of laser etchings on the back with accents around the rear mounted fingerprint scanner, camera unit and physical buttons. You can get this one in black with red accents or red with black accents and I think it looks pretty good. On the front is a notch 6.3 inch IPS LCD display, 1080 by 2340 resolution with a pixel density of 409 ppi and in a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio to give you a nice wide view for gaming. Honor say that this phone will run the latest graphics heavy games at full frames per second for long sessions thanks to a tweaked Kirin 970 chipset and Huawei's GPU turbo technology. As well as having great gaming performance, the Honor Play has a 16 megapixel main camera with an f2.2 lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor to achieve portrait style shots. 
The front camera seems like it might be the best camera here. It also has a 60 megapixel sensor with extra large pixels and an f2.0 lens for good low light performance. Along with the Kirin 970, you'll also get 4GB of RAM. In some regions, there will be an option for 6. Both will have 64GB of onboard storage, upgradable to 256GB with a microSD card, a nice 3750mAh battery, 4K video at 30 frames per second, and all for £299, which isn't bad at all. I must admit, I'm not in love with the fairly generic look of the back of the Honor Play. The Play Edition is much nicer, but I really like the tall 19.5x9 aspect screen and sustained 60 frame per second frame rates are achievable in the latest games, so if mobile gaming is your thing, it might be worth a look. After the Honor launch, I headed over to EFA. The traffic was terrible and it took ages, but I made it and I got lots more shots. So if you like this, hit that like button and the subscribe. I've got a couple more EFA videos on the way, then we should have some of these phones in the studio for a proper review. So like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post a video here at BTEC and be the first to see it. I'm David Wildman and this was BTEC.